I don't think that the global talent visa is going to be any easier to apply for than the exceptional promise and exceptional talent routes. I'm Tom Bradford. I'm a lawyer in the UK. I'd be very happy to assist you if you are considering any of these routes. Now, the purpose of this video is to just go through the global talent visa and what it actually involves, what we know so far. So it's essentially, um, by the Home Office's own admission, a rebranding exercise for the exceptional promise and exceptional talent. The two key differences are, number one, they're looking to remove the cap. But the cap, in terms of number of applications, isn't exceeded anyway, um, not wherever ever having been exceeded. So I don't think that's going to make any material difference. Um, the other uh, change, second change, which I think may be more significant, is that universities may be able to become endorsing bodies rather than that being a monopoly held by these uh, uh, organizations, Arts Council, British Academy, Royal Society, Royal Academy of Engineering and Tech Nation. Um, it, will be, it will broaden out. Um, that's the only way in which um, it would materially differ. But in terms of the actual standards uh, to be applied, I don't think it's going to um, be different. However, um, I'm going to be doing um, a video very shortly on um, how you can actually make it easier for yourself to apply under the exceptional talent or exceptional promise and and how I think applicants sometimes make it difficult for themselves to to apply particularly for tech nation by selecting the wrong uh, criteria that they're relying on in their application so um, subscribe if you want to get a notification about that video or stay tuned now and that's just for completeness let's go let's go through this and what we know about the global talent visa so it's supposed to be a fast track visa offer to cement the UK as a science superpower. Uh, it will it will be um, uh, an accelerated track so it's three years to indefinite leave to remain rather than five. Um, it, you don't have a minimum salary and you don't need to secure a job before arriving in the UK but you didn't need to have, do that for exceptional promise or talent anyway. You can bring dependents. Um, it says it will ensure that people with specialist skills in STEM subjects can apply. So that's science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So that is potentially a bit of a broader category than, than um, those offered um, by these bodies. I mean, they, they don't target science specifically apart from the Royal, Royal Society. So I imagine this is going to be a bit broader than, than the Royal, Royal Society and what's also captured by the Royal Academy of Engineering. Um, it, it, the question here, frequently asked questions in the Home Office's document is, is this, the, uh, is this a tier one exceptional talent route? And it is. They say we'll be rebranding the entire tier one exceptional talent route to recognize our desire to attract global talent. What are the key changes? The new offer, make sure those with specialist skills in STEM subjects can apply to the UK. As I say, they can anyway, except that this is potentially a broader category. The way they propose to broaden it is by what they say is substantially and radically expanding the operation of the exceptional talent route. So they're gonna review the selection criteria, remove the requirement for those endorsed as exceptional uh, promise or as exceptionally promising to have been awarded a research fellowship. Open up the route to those who have received a res uh, European research funding. Um, well, I don't know what the chance of uh, European research funding is um, post Brexit. Un <clears throat> uh, Rebranding the route to recognize our desire to attract global talent and uncapping the route, which I've already commented on. Will individuals still have to meet the salary threshold? No. What will be the fees? Will they be comparable to the to the other routes? Um, and I didn't see anything particularly of note in, in this, um, except that, of course, it's open to EU nationals, but at the moment, EU nationals benefit from free movement um, until Brexit. They say they're going to monitor uptake. 
there hasn't been as much uptake as they wanted on the innovator and startup visas yet, or definitely the innovator visa quite yet. Will you bring this forward with or without a deal? Yes. So look guys, that's what we know. Um, I think I will be producing more content on this, but in the meantime, uh, I don't think it's worth holding off on making your exceptional promise or exceptional talent application pending these new routes. I think it's just gonna, this is basically gonna open it up to a broader category of applicants. Um, I suppose it's possible that you could have a science discipline that isn't captured within the Royal Society. I doubt it in terms of natural sciences or engineering, but except for that very sort of narrow circumstance, uh, I would just put in your application under exceptional promise using the method that I will reveal in my next video. Until then, I'll say bye for now.